The subsequent weeks weighed heavily on Richard, each day stretching on as if time itself had slowed to a grinding halt. With every passing moment, the pit of despair that had taken hold of his soul grew deeper and more suffocating. Numbness, like a thick fog, enveloped his entire being, rendering him insensible to the world around him. Sleep became an elusive luxury, denied to him by the haunting spectres of grief and anguish that plagued his restless mind. Devoid of appetite, Richard renounced any pretense of being a human with basic needs. The mere notion of sustenance held no appeal to him, for he had lost the capacity to derive pleasure from the act of eating. Like a wandering spectre, he mindlessly meandered through the streets of the town, his footsteps devoid of purpose or direction. His eyes, now glazed over with a vacant emptiness, mirroring the hollowness that consumed him from within. Richard existed as a mere shell of his former self, disconnected from the rhythms of life that once sustained him. His body moved mechanically, propelled by some invisible force, while his spirit remained adrift in a desolate void. He resembled a lost soul, trapped between the realms of the living and the dead, unable to find solace or belonging in either. In this state of profound desolation, Richard roamed the town, a haunting presence that stirred whispers and fearful glances from those who crossed his path. He had become a ghostly apparition, an embodiment of sorrow and despair, forever trapped in a twilight existence that bore no resemblance to the person he once was. As Richard carried out his duties as a sin-eater, his actions held no meaning, devoid of any connection to the solemn task at hand. He mindlessly partook of the essence of the recently departed, his senses dulled, scarcely caring for the sacredness of the ritual. It was as if a veil had been lifted, revealing the hollowness and emptiness that lay beneath. The weight of his dear friend Joseph's betrayal bore down upon him with an unbearable force, tearing through the very fabric of his emotional being. It shattered his core, leaving him adrift in a desolate sea of emptiness and despair. The act of consuming the sins of others, once a source of solace and purpose, now held no significance. It was as if Richard himself had become a vessel drained of all meaning and purpose, lost in the darkness of his friend's ultimate betrayal. Until now, Joseph had tended to their financial matters, and Richard was shaken to discover that he had been compensated for his role as a sin-eater all these years. Dwelling in Joseph's abode, he awaited the arrival of debt collectors, refusing to answer the door, cowering in fear when they would knock on the door. It was only when the men finally departed did Richard emerge, taking the notes that were pinned to the door. His eyes fell upon the scattered papers that started to pile upon the table, revealing the magnitude of his indebtedness. With the funds he possessed, Richard could have easily settled the debt, yet he hesitated. Contemplating his next course, he pondered whether to cling to Joseph's tainted dwelling or retreat to the desolate wilderness he once called home. Each option rents his soul asunder, inflicting unbearable torment. Remaining within the abode he had shared with Joseph became an anguishing torment, as every nook and cranny bore witness to memories besmirched by Joseph's final utterance, I despise you, always have. Richard continued to drift through each day, his actions mechanical, oblivious to the world around him. Night after night, he concocted plans for escape, only to find himself inexorably drawn back to the sole haven he had known for over four decades. On one such night, he sat motionless in the kitchen, bereft of the ability to discern the passage of time. The pounding on the door shattered his desolate reverie, and his mind inferred the relentless debt collectors, demanding their due. Richard still lacked the strength to confront them. With the knowledge that he possessed the means to settle his debt, Richard found himself caught in the suffocating grip of indecision. Paralyzed by self-pity and sorrow, he remained rooted in his desolate state, unable to break free from the shackles that bound him. The relentless pounding on the door intensified, reverberating through the air, yet Richard could not muster the will to rise from his somber perch. If only he could find the strength to hasten his movements, to confront the world outside, he might be able to immerse himself in the solace of solitude and despair, seeking refuge from the harsh reality that plagued him. The pounding persisted, accompanied by the urgent shouts demanding his compliance, yet Richard remained ensnared within his own inner turmoil, gripped by a paralyzing inertia that seemed impossible to overcome. Then, with a resounding crash, the door splintered, sundered by an unseen force. Several men burst in, brandishing weapons. Richard was taken aback, deeming their excessive show of force incongruous with mere debt collectors. Where is he? Where is the demon? barked one of the men, their words barely piercing Richard's clouded thoughts. It was in that moment, when one of them lunged forward with malicious intent, that the horrifying truth finally seeped into his consciousness like a chilling mist. 
These men were not driven by a pursuit of riches, but by an insatiable thirst for his very life. The realization struck him with a jolt. The demon they were looking for was him. Instinctively, Richard sprung to his feet and kicked the chair he had been sitting in, sending it flying in the direction of one of his attackers. With a surge of adrenaline, he sought sanctuary behind a sturdy door, narrowly avoiding a thunderous gunshot that pierced the air. The cacophony of chaos grew as a relentless onslaught ensued, with a few more intruders forcefully breaching the front entrance. Blocking the second exit, Richard's only option was to scramble up the stairs. The demon has been feasting upon the deceased. Seize him, echoed the chilling cry of one of the men, piercing Richard's ears as he hurled himself through the narrow opening of the second-story window. The fragmented shards of glass shimmered in the moonlight, dancing momentarily in the air, before cascading to the ground below. As the wind brushed against his face, a stark awakening coursed through his veins, shattering any remnants of denial. The truth now stood irrefutable, casting a damning light upon his own careless actions and the consequences they bore. Reluctantly, he acknowledged the harsh reality that lay before him, an unyielding truth that could no longer be ignored. The remnants of his shattered existence, like broken shards of glass, could no longer hold him. With a heavy heart, he made the painful decision to embark on a new journey, bidding farewell to the familiar abode that had sheltered him for so long. The place he once called home would now become a mere memory, a relic of a past life left behind in the annals of time. Mm -hmm.